Wow, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. And what do I mean by that? Well, it is Friday night. You made it. And this is the Friday Paranormal Portal. I'm your host, Brent Thomas. Thank you all for being here, as always. It's a, a rare pleasure to be able to do these shows. I've, only, you know, I've been doing it for a number of years. It's been a pleasure for a lot of years, but it continues to be a pleasure. It's something I desperately enjoy doing, and I uh, hope you all are doing great and have a great weekend planned out ahead of you. I'm still waiting for the warm weather to kick in here. It's It, it got warm a little bit, and then it just kind of... It's been kind of rainy and cool again, so I'm like, come on, where's that heat? I need the shorts. I need the shorts and bare feet. That's what I'm saying, but anyway, enough of my whining. Hope you guys are great. Um, we have a lot going on for you, and by we, I mean not just me and my many personalities, but I also mean the big branch of my personal family tree is here, and that is Mr. Sheldon Thomas. How you doing, buddy? I am doing good. I am doing fantastic, especially on this Friday after a long week. I'm, I'm sure all you all feel the same, and I'm glad you could spend it here with us here in the Paranormal Portal. Amen. There's no better way to end your week than uh, to hang out right here in the portal, I think. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's my personal opinion anyway, but I'm, I'm probably really biased, but... I know that it, it's, you know, I, and I say it so many times and, and honest to God, I couldn't be more, I couldn't be more genuine by saying this, but it's like, it is such a rush to push, push the go live and just to see the names popping up. It's like, oh, this is, it's so cool. I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys see in us, but I'm glad you see it. And I hope you don't quit. Um, we're just absolutely thrilled to have you here with us. And uh, we got a lot to get to tonight. We're going to do the news, of course. That's coming up in just moments because, by God, we just all need information, right? <laughs> that's right. We need more, <clears throat> more, and it might even be it might even be valuable. You never know. I mean, it's kind of the uh, law of averages, isn't that what they say? Eventually, <laughs> something valuable will pop up. So that's right. Um, we're going to do the news, and then we're going to uh, Sheldon's got a, a report. All prepared about the the uh, Minnesota experiences in uh, cryptozoology, so that should be really. No, I'm just kidding. Wait, what? <laughs> Sheldon, didn't you get my email? Come on. <laughs> my 1400 word paper. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it will be graded and handed back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we're going to talk about uh, lots of creatures and stuff, and uh, we're also going to get to the cryptids and and just whatever the hell we get to. Um, there's never any set schedule here on the show we just talk about what we talk about um but i don't know i don't know what else to say it's kind of it's kind of a, it's kind of like improv theater here in a lot of ways but it is all absolutely live and unrehearsed so you're getting it just as uh it occurs to us uh although you know i do i do pull up things in advance that we can cover on the show but we got a lot of things to get to um God, I thought tonight was going to start later. My apologies for any of you that are like, wait a minute, man, you're supposed to start later. I, I thought so. The reason I thought so, again, I had to take uh, the minion, the little minion, to uh, a birthday party today. And, and we went and had a good time at a local bowling alley and uh, hung out and ate pizza. And, you know, the kids had cupcakes and, and uh, he and his <laughs> friends had a lot of fun. And in the, the, you know, they got these big bouncy houses and stuff. It's just crazy. Uh, so he had a blast, but uh, I had read the read the invitation wrong. It actually good thing I reread it last night, and and he I think he pointed it out, and he said I I said well you know it's probably going to have to go about five. He said Dad it says three. <laughs> so, turns out it wrapped up at five. So if we had showed up at five, we would have been really disappointed. Oh. So anyway, got that all straightened out. But that's why we're starting. At the normal time, I did put a note out on Discord. I meant to put it out on social media, but I've been just chasing my tail and I just simply forgot. So, uh, hold on, still got a cough. <laughs> yes, I'm still dealing with this a little bit. It's getting better every day, but uh, it's still absolutely freaking annoying. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. It's like, it's like I'm, I'm inhaling pudding when I sleep and then I get up and it's like, <laughs> Ooh, that don't sound good. no, I mean, I, I've already gone through a cycle of antibiotics and stuff. So now it's just cleaning out, but it's just a lot of crap to clean out. I think so. Yeah. At least that's the version I'm going with. So just watched again, uh, 
Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Okay, well, this was the boxing channel. I'd be way more interested in that. <laughs> Glad to hear about boxing, man. Awesome. No, those I, I do like watching boxing. In fact, uh, yeah, little little a little fact about me is um, when I was, I guess, about 18, 19, and I lived in Michigan for a period of time. Uh, the the family of cousins that I live with, uh, the the father was a doctor in Michigan, and he was actually the fight doctor for Golden Gloves. And we would oftentimes go to the Golden Gloves matches and even some pro matches where he would be at the doctor. And we would go get these amazing seats and, and uh, in the Detroit area. And I loved watching boxing. It was just amazing. Those guys are so incredibly skilled. But, uh, oh. um, yeah, I mean, they are, they are just incredible athletes. And uh, razor sharp uh, reflexes and precision. It's just incredible. But anyway, so I, I'm not, I'm not bashing on the boxing thing. It's just, that no, not <laughs> this is not the boxing portal. It's the paranormal portal. So <laughs> let's get back to that. And, uh, let's see, I guess we should start with some news, huh, Sheldon? That's a good place to start. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to dive into the paranormal, paranormal portal news. And uh, hopefully you're going to find this wildly entertaining and, and factual and informative. And you'll leave here a well-rounded person. Uh, more well-rounded, anyway. But anyway, let's see what we can do. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the news. Hey, Midwest Night Watchers, good to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Paranormal Portal News Desk, and I'm your anchor, Brent Thomas, along with my co-anchor, Mr. Sheldon Thomas, and we're going to dive into some news and see what we can do about, uh, let's see, where the hell is it? Oh, there we go. I'm like, you know, which, which tab am I looking for? <laughs> As welcome to my world. I got a, I got a literally a tab ranch here. I can't even say a farm anymore. It's like I, I got tabs all over the place in several browsers. So it's like, which one is it? I found it, though. Yeah, I know. It's a good thing I jacked up the RAM in this thing. <laughs> we would have grounded to some freeze, freezes for, you know, every show from the time I started. All right. Let's get to some news. The first one up is actually having to do with Bigfoot, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, which is kind of exciting, right, Sheldon? Yes. You like the Bigfoot news, don't you? I love Bigfoot news. Um, well, me too. And uh, here we go. The first one up tonight. And again, please support these sites that we visit on the show. These are incredible sites. These people are working hard, providing excellent, excellent uh, information and articles for your enjoyment. And uh, I've just loved these sites and this site is specifically that we're going to visit now is called unexplained-mysteries.com so please make sure you visit these sites help them out visit their 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 sites and and uh, peruse the articles you're going to love it anyway because you're already into this stuff just like the rest of us and uh you're going to help them keep the lights on by giving them traffic and revenue and all that stuff so please visit it unexplained-mysteries.com Brings us the first story, and this is uh, BFRO investigates Bigfoot sighting near Centralia, Washington. This is as of April 3rd. That was uh, two days ago. Wow. And, uh, you know, of course, Washington State, I think, is the most reported uh, state for sightings, and according to the BFRO, and, and I think even other, other uh, sites that allow postings of, of personal experiences. Uh, Washington's always up on top and does, I guess it stands to reason it's kind of the, the birthplace of the, of many of these legends. So the alleged Sasquatch was sighted along the top of a nearby Ridge back at the beginning of beginning of February. Uh, does an unidentified species of intelligence, intelligent bipedal hominid roam the forests of North America? While the jury is certainly out on whether or not this elusive cryptozoological enigma actually exists there are many thousands of people who believe that they have witnessed the creature firsthand wow that's really cool 
Uh, one such witness recently reported their sighting, which took place north of Centralia, Washington, on February 4th to the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, or the BFRO. According to the report, the man had not had been hiding or riding, not, not hiding, riding, very different word. One letter, total different meaning. Uh, <laughs> riding his motorcycle along his friend and his son when they spotted some sort of large hominid-like creature running along the top of the ridge half a mile away. This story sounds really familiar. I wonder if I pulled it up twice by accident and I'm rereading old news, but we're going to read it anyway. <laughs> Is that according to the reports, uh, they were riding the, the motorcycle and uh, he and a friend and saw this thing running around on the top of a ridge half a mile away. It was very large and human shaped, he wrote, and there was one color, tan slash brown, moving across very rugged terrain, making a beeline for the next tree line. Ooh, that's. <laughs> that was almost poetic. It moved so fluently with little arm movement, unlike a human running. It was easily 10 feet tall for us to be able to see it from so far away. All in all, the sighting lasted around 30 seconds. And according to the BFRO investigator Scott Taylor, the sighting was likely to be the real deal. Based on the description of the way this creature walked and its speed across the terrain, I believe these three witnesses were fortunate to see a Sasquatch, he wrote. So did the trio actually see a real-life Bigfoot, or could it have been a case of mistaken identity? And there's an update. Maybe that's why it wasn't actually an old story. <clears throat> or an older story, but uh, there is an update, and that's why it's posted again. After this report came out, a cross-country runner from Rochester High School uh, emailed the local news outlet to claim that it was, in fact, him that was seen running along the ridge that day. The reason the creature looked so big was because he was running side-by-side -side with someone else. He even had a GPS Garmin device that corroborates that he was at the location at the time, looks like this is one mystery that we can't safely consider solved. That we can safely consider solved. Well, there you go. Um, wow. Again, it's it's an honest mistake. However, it wasn't easily ten feet tall. Clearly, it was just two people running in concert together. Maybe at a distance, it looked like one body. And of course, you know that's one of the big uh, one of the big descriptors is that when people see these things, they're so much larger than a person. Well, if it was two people running and then one was a little lower and one was a little higher, suddenly it becomes a 10 foot tall thing running along. Um, so that's, that's cool. And you know, mistaken identity is nothing new to any of this. Um, I think that it's, it certainly doesn't, it doesn't remove the, the possibility of this being very real. I'm, I'm convinced that it's real and, I know many of you out there are, but you have to allow for human error in any sighting. And it's always a possibility. But, you know, obviously in this case, it wasn't what they thought they saw. And that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean it's not a real phenomenon. There aren't really hominids out there running around or whatever Bigfoot is. It just means that in this case, they're riding on motorcycles and, and, and probably should be paying attention on where they're going rather than something running a half a mile away on a hilltop. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a good way to stay alive. So I'm sure their, their, their attention was split between the two things like, Oh my God, do you see that? You know, that kind of thing. And people make mistakes. We are fallible creatures, of course. So uh, I don't doubt that this was indeed the, the runner as, as is, uh, as is claimed. But Again, that doesn't mean it's not a real phenomenon. It doesn't mean there aren't real sightings and, and real Bigfoot running out there uh, amok, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's, it's a good update, though, because I think it's important. It it's, is. Even for these kind of foul claims or in whatnot, they're still important. Yeah, because, I mean, honestly, here's the thing. I, I think we have to remember this. As enthusiasts of the subject matters, we do have a confirmation bias because in our minds, this is already, this is already settled. They're out there and there are people that see them and, and, and many claims are way too close and uh, way too, way too present 
to be, well, I just confused this was actually a, a dog reaching up for a, you know, a kibble or something stupid. It was, you know, people have seen huge creatures. They've come face to face with them and, and there's no mistaking it. But when you got these distance sightings, it is more ambiguous and, and, and it's harder to draw any definitive conclusions based on a, you know, half mile away sighting. You know, that's, that's really a considerable distance for even 10 feet tall things. So, yeah. cause you can't make out details. You just see, uh, you see basically a form or a silhouette and that can be misleading. So anyway, well, it's better to just like, um, whenever you go on hiking, whenever you're traveling out in those more wild areas, maybe keep some binoculars on. You. Yeah, you exactly. Know, so you can see farther and see those details and then you can debunk it or mm -hmm. you could say you saw it. Just stop your motorcycle first is my only thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, then, yeah, of course. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, objects are closer than they appear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or farther away than they appear in some cases. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> to, to start to take knee jerk reactions to an upcoming stump and it turns out it's a half mile away. <clears throat> I'm just saying people can get killed that way. Uh, don't use binoculars on motor vehicles. Uh, all right. There's the first story. I think it was good. I think it's, it's important and it's again, it's okay. Not every sighting is going to be real. Not every sighting is going to be valid. Not every That's experience the... is what the experiencer thinks it is. <laughs> what were you saying? Exactly. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I just thought you had some additive. Okay. Let's get to the next one. And this is another one from unexplained-mysteries.com. You see why I love this site. I mean, it's just so damn good. All right, let's see what this one says. And then we got one, two more after this. There's four stories tonight, Sheldon. Oh, awesome. It's an yeah. extra newsy evening on the portal. <laughs> glad to hear it. I'm glad. Yeah. All right, here we go. Unexplained-mysteries.com brings us a UFO phenomena report. And this is a metallic UFO captured on camera by airline passenger over New York City. Wow. And there's the picture. Uh, if it's if you got a delay, you'll see it up on your screen shortly. But that's, I mean, Whoa. that does look pretty interesting. It doesn't look like an airplane. doesn't look like a helicopter. doesn't look like a Batman balloon. We've it's seen those. It's almost like the, pill, the pill-shaped ones. Yeah, exactly. It's like a Tic Tac. It's a the black TikTok, licorice yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Black licorice. <laughs> black right. licorice, Mike and Ike or something, if there, <laughs> if there are such things. What were those one things called at the movie theater? They're like good enoughs or good something. And, and there was white ones and black ones or something like that. And I think they were like a licorice candy. They were. They, I thought they were okay back when I was young. But um, I don't know. I don't recall. Yeah, I don't know. They weren't, they weren't a hugely popular thing. But <laughs> I just remember seeing them like, oh, yeah, I had them when I was little. All right, so let's see what this says. It says, the object, which resembled a metallic disc, quickly zipped past the window at considerable speed. The short video clip, which was uploaded onto Reddit around six days ago, was allegedly recorded by an airline passenger who had been flying back to New York City from Florida. Watch it fly over the top of the, of the, over the, top of the clip. First few seconds. The caption reads, by far the clearest video I've ever seen. Really? That's quite a claim. And here it goes. It says, when the clip is played at normal speed, it's extremely easy to miss the object because it flits past... It flits? Flits. It flits. That's a word, I guess. Flits past the window in a split second. When the video is slowed down or paused, however... It is possible to make out the strange metallic and possibly disc-shaped object moving across the sky. Exactly what the object could be remains unclear. Some social media users have speculated that it could be a drone or some type of balloon, while others maintain what the witness what what that what the passenger captured on film was something otherworldly. Well, whatever is the case, it's certainly an interesting sighting. Yeah, it's I don't like know. A balloon traveling faster than a plane? Oh, this Excuse is... Me? Yeah, exactly, I know. <laughs> so th this is posted by the Hidden Underbelly, and we've he actually reached out to me once after we shared one of his clips, and he's like, hey, thanks for putting my clip on. So, um, and this is a... I, I like his channel, uh, or his or hers. I, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but there's a, a picture of a guy on there, so I assume it's a guy. Um, and, and 
they post a ton of this stuff over there. So check it out. Check out the Hidden Underbelly on YouTube. Uh, we'll look at the video and see what you guys think. Who, who put this? Uh, somebody wrote something in YouTube that highlighted my name. Let's see. It says, oh, Eric. Good and plenty. That's it. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> They're called good and plenty. Yeah, what did I call them? Good enough? Sir? <laughs> they were good enough. It's better than chewing on the cardboard, but uh, that's you know, right. <laughs> good and plenty. That's what it is. Yep. You remember, Eric. Well, well played, sir. All right. Here we go. Hidden Underbelly 2.0 is uh, the ones posting this video. Let's check it out. And I'm going to turn off the sound because I don't need all the, the background music or, or copyright claims to the music. YouTube is just brutal about that. Yeah, I like this channel. Check out this channel. So here it is, New York City. I got to pull it up so we can make sure we can. Oh, look at that skyline. That's beautiful. There's the actual freeze frame, ladies and gentlemen, right there. There it is. It doesn't look like a balloon. Um, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to know. The, the thing that I always have trouble with with aerial phenomena is how far is it away, really? Oh, there it was. Did you see that? Look at that. Let's back that up a little bit. Okay, continuing. It flits, boom, right by on the top here. There it goes. Well, it's Did you see that? the directions of the plane. Oh, I see. So, well, I mean, I can see why maybe they thought it was a balloon because it looks like it's really pretty close. Some people could speculate, oh, it's a balloon or it's a bird. But when you look at the freeze frames, it really doesn't look like a bird or a balloon. Generally, the balloons, I don't know, typically are mylar, and they're usually very shiny, first off. So if it was shiny, I'd maybe a little more prone to think that. But there it is. And, and you can see the actual frames of it passing by. It's like, boom. So I don't know what the frame rate on a camera like this is, but that is pretty significant distance. But you have two, two opposing speeds going on, the speed of the plane and then the speed of the object going the other direction. And I assume it, it has some kind of velocity that it's not just drifting like a balloon, but honestly, it could be. It just doesn't look like a balloon. <laughs> it definitely doesn't look like a balloon. <clears throat> and I'm talking the mylar ones. I'm not talking like the balloons, like, uh, you know, the balls with the, you know, the string and crap. But, you know, because those mylar balloons can be really creative and, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of uh, UFO videos that have been taken throughout the world... Um, but there it is. That's the hidden underbelly 2.0. Very interesting. So what do you it guys think? Seem, it, it does seem kind of close to the camera. It do. does. It does. It's hard. I mean, it looks like it's within a hundred yards of the plane, yeah. but I don't know. Again, it's ambiguous to me because I don't know what they were using. I don't know if they were zoomed. I don't see the wing of the plane, uh, or anything. Just the fact that it's going over New York city. So well, uh, it could a mile be. away. That's a huge UFO. Yeah, could you imagine? Oh my God, <laughs> that's the mothership right there. Um, whatever it is, it it could be. It could be a UFO. Could be one of those tic tac things or whatever. I don't know. It's it's really kind of an ambiguous shape. I don't know that it it's it doesn't look like the saucer that I saw. Um, because mine looked like the actual saucer, like it was kind of rounded on the top, rounded on the bottom, more mm -hmm. more geometric than rounded. But anyway. It had that rough shape, like two saucers, you know, like two T saucers, you know, face to face uh, is what mine looked like with a gap. And then the lights, the panel of lights in that gap chasing around and around and around. So I think, I think I'm having trouble with that. And said, but the balloon would be going hundreds of miles an hour. I but don't know. The thing is, I don't because how, you know, jet planes, they they go incredibly fast. Sure. I think we're on 600 some miles <clears> now, I think. Um, but, I mean, is that stationary or is the jet traveling so fast that it looks like it's in motion as well? I don't well, know. It, could, it, could be, it could be just the plane motion making it zip past if it was just yeah. free-floating. But mm -hmm. uh, the balloon probably would only be going hundreds of miles an hour if, if this was taking place at, you know, 30,000, 40,000 feet, which is generally the cruising altitude of most commercial planes. And the wind, the wind speeds up there are insane like that. But this isn't that far from the surface. This is maybe 10,000 or under. Um, so it's not going to be that much different than the surface winds uh, at that height. Yeah. Um, that's my take. I, I could be wrong, but that's my understanding and, and my you know experience having flown on uh, smaller airplanes at around the 10,000 foot ceiling. 
uh, they just they just don't get the wind shears as you know like they do up in higher altitudes for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. With Annie, it's round and angular, and I think it's a drum. The speed is an issue. The angular part, because you notice how it's kind of tipping forward. Mm -hmm. So like that that could lead me to believe that it's a drone, but that is so high up for a drone. I don't know. Yeah, generally don't know. they don't go much. I mean, 10,000 feet for a drone is pretty insane. And, and that's incredible. Yeah. When you're looking at the, at the horizon here, that, that looks about where uh, personal aircraft fly around the 10,000 foot ceiling. Um, they don't generally go higher than that because it goes into commercial space, uh, space after that. But yeah. um, I, I don't know. It could be, I mean, drones could go that high, I guess. I just don't know that they are, I don't think they fly them more than a couple thousand feet or, you know, 1,500 feet. Yeah, I don't know, it though. Just, it doesn't have enough range. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I just don't know enough about that to really weigh in, but it could be. I mean, it could be some kind of drone or a military drone or whatever. Who knows? Um, that's a good take. It's, it's worth considering for sure. So there you go. That's from the UFO desk. Uh, and special thanks to Hidden Underbelly 2.0. Great video. Uh, I don't have any answers, but it's it's certainly worth considering. Could very well be legitimate. Uh, could also be not legitimate. It's literally four or five frames, and then it's nothing. So it's hard to you know get a real gauge out of that much of a that much of a sight. Excuse me, that much of a sighting. OPR three five seven says drones can go up to sixty thousand. Private well, drones? It depends on the kind of drone, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I can't imagine private drones. I mean, maybe they could theoretically, but I don't think it's legal to fly them that high. Not that everybody obeys the letter of the law. <laughs> so, oh, that's true. Um, I don't know. I again, I can't speak of any authority about it, but I thought that you know, private drones are generally kept pretty close to the surface just because of potential collision issues with uh, private airplanes and, and commercial. Um, but oh, OPR says commercial and military. Okay. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah. That wouldn't yeah. surprise me. And the fact that they're unmanned, they can probably deal with uh, a lot more uh, force and shear than, than a pilot in a lot of cases. Yeah. But yeah, that's crazy. Very true. Okay. All right. So this is that article uh, again. I'm not coming at it from any kind of expertise, just my thoughts and uh, Sheldon's thoughts. And we That's could right. be absolutely wrong. I, I, yeah. I, <laughs> we're not authorities on these subjects. We're just, uh, you know, enthusiasts. So take, take from it what you will. All right, let's, uh, whoops, let's go to this one so you can be on screen too. Because it's not just me. Tomorrow night it'll be just me, but not tonight. All right, um, here we go again. This is another one, and then we got one more. This is from unexplained-mysteries.com, ladies and gentlemen, where we'll be diving into another story, and this one has to do with paleontology. And, uh, oh, God, how long is this one? Yeah, no, we're going to skip this one. It's really long. Is it a book? Yeah, it's what is, what was it that gave modern humans the edge over Neanderthals? I, I think this, I, I pulled it up because I thought, God, that's really interesting. Um, and I would be interested in reading it, but I'll, I'll put a link in the, in the chats for anybody that wants to actually check this out because I, I, when it can, when you're considering the possibility that there's still hominids of some kind roaming the earth and they probably were directly competing with humans in the distant past and maybe knowing the story of the Neanderthals and, and what is believed to have happened in there might give us insights into what happened in our ancient history with what we understand as Bigfoots. Um, so, you know, again, but let's put it in the chat. Here is the link in uh, YouTube and Twitch, and I'm going to post it on Rumble in just a sec as soon as I pull up that chat because it's not combined. All right. Hello, Barbara. Good to see you over in, in uh, Rumble. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, Lucky Gypsy's over there as HB Girl to you. <clears throat> there we go. All right, there we have it. There we have it. Uh, there we have it. There we have it. So I'm not going to read that one. It's just a very long article. But if you're interested in, you know, possibly the history of human beings with other hominids, this may be a good insight into what might have might have happened with them as well as Neanderthals. So, 
All that right. Is, that, I've always been curious about that too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, anybody, including you, can read it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. I'll just read the first uh, first couple of paragraphs. It says today we only see the human species left on the planet. Yeah, it's not true. Anyway, but what makes what was it that makes us so special? Why did humans take over the world while our closest relatives, the Neanderthals, became extinct? It's possible we were just smarter, but there's surprisingly little evidence that that's true. <laughs> Even still. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Neanderthals did have big brains, language, and sophisticated tools. They made art and jewelry, and they were smart, suggesting a curious possibility. Maybe the crucial differences weren't at the individual level, but in our societies. 250,000 years ago, Europe and Western Asia were Neanderthal lands. Homo sapiens inhabited, inhabited Southern Africa, and estimates vary, but perhaps 100,000 years ago, modern humans migrated out of Africa. 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals disappeared from Asia and Europe, replaced by humans. Their slow, inevitable replacement suggests that humans had some advantage, but not, that, but not what it was. But that's not what it was? It just says, but not what it was. <coughs> Excuse me. Anthropologists... Uh, really? Let's try that again. Anthropologists once saw Neanderthals as dull-witted uh, brutes, but recent archaeological finds show they rivaled us in intelligence. Neanderthals mastered fire before we did. They were deadly hunters, taking big game like mammoth and woolly rhinos, and small animals like rabbits and birds, and they gathered plants, seeds, and shellfish. Hunting and foraging, all these species demanded deep understanding of nature. Neanderthals also had a sense of beauty, making beads and cave paintings. They were spiritual people, burying their dead with flowers. Stone circles found inside of caves may be Neanderthal shrines, like modern hunter-gatherers. Neanderthal uh, lives were probably steeped in superstition and magic, their skies full of gods, the caves inhabited by ancestral spirits. Uh, but then there's the facts. Homo sapiens and Neanderthals had children together. That's where I was going with it. It's like, well, I know that, that there are several, um, several strains of human, uh, especially European humans, that... Uh, do have Neanderthal DNA. So either that was by choice or not, but either way it happened. And I'm not chuckling cause that's funny. It's just like, well, you know, maybe there was interbreeding, but maybe there was, uh, uh, eh, I don't want to say interbreeding for the other alternative, but maybe it wasn't uh, voluntary in every case, but I see. it did happen. And, uh, that, that DNA does still survive in many of us. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, the, but we, let's see, they had children together. We weren't that different, but we, but we met Neanderthals many times over many millennia, always the same result. They disappeared. We remained. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were just better looking. I'm just saying, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Do. I don't know. Well, there's so much more to that article and please check it out because, uh, you know, there's a lot more to cover about that. But I, I, I suspect that it was either, you know, either it was willingly commingling just because, Hey, we moved up into their lands and they're like, Oh, welcome. And, you know, come on over and warm up and, uh, you know, a couple, isn't couple the, beers and suddenly bad choices. Who knows? <laughs> isn't that the theory of Bigfoot is that they are the ancient Neanderthal? Well, it's it, the theory is, is that, the fossil record, well, there's several theories, but one of the, mm. like Lloyd Pye was saying, look, you know, there's the whole missing link thing problem for us. So maybe we're not actually from here, but, you know, we, we, we oftentimes look at these other primitive humans as our ancestors. And maybe they're not our ancestors, but they might be the ancestors of what we understand as Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Skunk Apes, etc. now. You know, like those are their ancestors. And then, you know, it's possible that there's no missing link when you look at it that way, because it's just a progression of development into what we see as Bigfoot now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. which then goes on to, are we the machine race? Are we from somewhere else? Are we some amalgamation or, you know, other, I mean, of course there's a religious perspectives too. So I don't know. Or but, it's all simulation. <clears throat> or it's all a simulation and we're just in the matrix. <laughs> That's right. Just saying. It could be. 
So, an interesting article anyway. Um, I don't know. Again, I don't think, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, everything scientific comes with their skew, you know, and, and that's the hard part is that oftentimes I don't think they look at things genuinely objectively. They just look at things and how to fit it into their narrative. And, and I think that that's problematic in, uh, in our modern understanding of science is, is that we, it starts out with such a closed, closed mind that it definitely skews the results because they are researching things to fit into their paradigm. And, and uh, when it doesn't, like the big bones in the Smithsonian, they just kind of disappear. You know, it didn't fit into the narrative. So, <clears throat> unfortunately. kind of makes you think that um, if, if scientists were to ever discover, um, well, what science describes as the, what do they call it, the God, the God energy, the God cell or whatever they're looking the for. The boson Higgs? Yeah, they did the the God particle. The God particle, yeah. Yeah, that's been discovered. Right. What? Yeah, they 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 discovered proof of the boson Higgs already. Wow, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Just go visit CERN. You'll get in the loop quick. Get it because it's wow. a loop. It's a so, ah. yeah, particle cloud. Ah. I don't know. The God particle, the boson Higgs. Yep. Wow. Uh, how, what? How? So they, they have evidence of it. Yeah. Wow. Yes, they do. They do. I, thought, I was like, I thought that, wow, I am so out of the loop. How long ago was that? <laughs> <laughs> How long ago did they find evidence of that? I don't know. I don't know. It's been quite a few years, though. Uh, oh, my God. It was, it's been, it was discovered in, uh, I think, maybe a decade ago. Maybe less. Wow. Yeah. That's how out of the loop I am. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm living in the past. Oh, <laughs> Princess Lion, thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Princess Lion. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they 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 discovered the boson Higgs. Yeah. So the God particle exists. It's well, they they have the God particle. Oh. What? What? Where what were you I going with that whole thought I... anyway? Well, I was going to say that if they finally discovered they would, they would reject it because it goes against what they believe. The atheist scientist, at least. But, you know, evidence already found, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. <laughs> Your point is moot. It's um, absolutely moot. Well, no, because they were already pursuing it. They were looking for them to say God particle. It's, it's just the, like the, the glue that holds everything together. They considered the, you know, because they couldn't really understand how did this all form from just these disparate elements. And so they can, as far as I understand it, and this is me bastardizing a whole lot of, of science, is just that they needed to understand what was what is it that is the basic building block that holds it all together. And so that's where, the as I understand it, the boson Higgs, theory came from is that there's got to be a god particle a foundational particle that everything's built from and so that's what they uh, were searching for so it was already it was already in their purview to find it and that's again fits into the narrative i think yeah yeah that, that's where i left off as far as my science knowledge that they were looking for it and then <laughs> now i'm finding out oh that's all been discovered yeah, yeah. yeah. so like, okay <laughs> Wow. That's where I quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, well, I mean, what what have they done with it? Like, that's That sounds like an amazing discovery. And now, well, I mean, just having knowledge of something doesn't mean that they can just suddenly build replicators or something, you know, like on Star Trek. So there's, yes. there's a yet. I will say that. Yeah, I agree with that, actually, because I'm sure... It won't be long and you'll be able to just phase a steak in it. You know, it's like, I'm hungry, you know, and rather than reaching for the pudding or something, you'll be, like, I just feel like some prime rib. And, and then you just hit a button and say prime rib and, and there it is like magic. Ooh. I need a beer. Oh, <laughs> I, I know. Recently, actually. I know. Thanks. That's, uh, you know, I didn't have any, Oh, it's but delicious. thank you. Yeah. I probably should hear more about that. <laughs> Did I mention I'm on a diet at all? You remember that at all? No. Yeah. I, well, I thought you couldn't. Have, I thought I. Didn't well, I know, but I. I, I well, no. I mean that that part of my diet is more financial. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there's there's the healthy diet, and then there's the the financial diet. I could actually eat prime rib. It's just 
can't eat prime rib. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, it's just real life. Um, I haven't got, got that champagne budget yet, but, you know, <laughs> maybe someday. I'm still still on the beer budget over here. <laughs> All right, so that was that article. Hopefully you guys found that interesting, um, at least the parts that I read. And, again, please read the rest of it if you want to know more. All right, there's one more. There's one more. And uh, this is, oh, yeah, this one. And this one is also posted over on Wes's site on uh, Sasquatch Chronicles blog. I saw it over there as well. I've had this open for, uh, I guess it was open on Tuesday or Wednesday. But I didn't get to it on Wednesday because I had a lot of them opened up on Wednesday. <clears throat> but this is also from unexplained-mysteries.com. And ladies and gentlemen, new real-life six-foot invisibility mega shield can hide multiple people. Yes, it can. Wow. And there's an image of, of it. And it's like this weird, I don't know, I, I, for lack of a better term, some kind of weirdly molded plexiglass that actually makes a prism effect with the light. And, and because of the way that the, the, I don't know, the prisms are angled, you actually don't see a person right behind it. It kind of just grabs the background and puts that onto the, you know, it transfers that light through. It has, it has a lot to do with just the way the, you know, I'm trying to think of a good way, like almost an accordion shape to it but it's prismatic and and therefore if you're right behind it it will grab the background and project that through and it's not technology it's just light that they're just grabbing wide bands of light from behind the person and projecting that onto the screen and therefore the person can just be hidden it's actually super cool i saw videos of it yeah i've seen videos of it too and and while this display probably isn't the best, could you imagine how good that would be if you were in the, in the, in the woods? Because, you know, if you had like some, some, some scrub in front of you and then you, you were just grabbing the light from behind you and, you know, dark shades of green. And I mean, it would be better than any camouflage because that much closer to becoming predators. Right. Exactly. Glimmer man or predators. Yeah. So, very cool. Uh, it says it's not quite on par with Harry Potter's invisibility cloak, but it is another step in the right direction. And it says two years after it was announced, its first invisibility shield, London-based firm Invisibility Shield Co. is back again with a brand new updated and much larger offering known as the Mega Shield. Oh, the Mega Shield. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, first there was the Invisibility Shield. Now the sequel, Mega Shield. Oh my God. When the shield doesn't, when, while the shield doesn't exactly offer complete invisibility, it is remarkably effective at hiding anything or anyone behind it, making it appear as though there is nothing there at all. This new, larger variant also makes it possible to hide multiple people at the same time. The lenses in this array are oriented so that the Vertical strip of light reflected by the standing crouch, crouching subject becomes diffuse when spreading out horizontally or passing through the back of the shield. Invisible Shield Co. writes on its Kickstarter page. From the observer's perspective, the background light is effectively smeared horizontally across the front face of the shield uh, over the area where the subject wouldn't ordinarily be seen. One of the most obvious applications for a shield like this would be the military, where the ability to remain well camouflaged would prove invaluable for soldiers on the battlefield. If the invisible ability shield could be adapted and applied to an outfit rather than just a single sheet of material, it would likely be a game changer. A demonstration of its capabilities can be viewed in the video below. And this is the Invisibility Shield 2.0 from their actual... Uh, their actual uh, YouTube page, so let's check it out without the music. Uh, we'll get to the good part here. Okay, I guess it's coming. Oh, there it is. Start out with a good part. <clears throat> That's really interesting. So if you had some kind of cover uh, just in front of this, that would be incredible. Isn't that something? It's awesome. That is really good. 
if I ever, if whenever I buy my own house, make all my windows <laughs> out of that, so if somebody knocks on the door, I can like look without them knowing I'm looking at them. <laughs> Jeez, it's the perfect introvert material. That's true. Put it on your front window. That's right. Yep, exactly. it'll just grab the background. That's funny because you can see the little bit of shadow from the person, but it's very, very faint. So <clears throat> it's interesting though, because, um, you know, this has been around for a while and there's, there's, there's gotta be just so many applications. Think of hunting, think of, you know, photography, like nature photographers to, you know, remain hidden from wild game and stuff. I mean, that would be just incredible. Not to mention like a shower curtain. Hello. <laughs> true good it's just, point just make shower curtains out of that stuff let's call it a day oh my God. True. that really is impressive though you know <clears throat> incredibly yeah but the question is okay so someone asked it in chat too how much is it how much is it that is the question we don't I, have any prices it's on kickstarter right now so i'm sure you could probably look over there and get more information about any pricing and stuff, but God, I hope it's cheap. Reminds me of, you know, like an old Japanese thing about, uh, it was an old technique where you hold up a, a sheet painted just like the background and then you, you know, you hide and the cat, you know, the quick observer would be looking for somebody looking down an alleyway and look, do they see a brick wall and then they yeah, keep going. Naruto. Oh yeah. The Naruto did that too. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty classic. But anyway, <laughs> Very interesting stuff. I don't know what you guys think about that, but uh, I imagine there'd be great uh, uh, opportunity. I don't know what it looks like to look through from the other side, though. Maybe it's all screwed up that way, too. Oh, yeah. So, but if you had a camera, I mean, hey, you could be standing right there. And Batman's I, right. It's it. It would appear you have to be a certain distance behind it for it to work. That does seem true. Oh. So when I, I noticed when some people were standing like directly behind it, you could. Kind of see the colors that were shining through. Sure, but it, again, if you were in the if you were in the forest, those kind of nuances would be kind of be lost because of how busy a scene like that is. I mean, they're they're right out in the open, and still you could see that, you know, the casual observer you might miss a lot of that, you know. <laughs> but if you're actually looking for someone, but if you had you know in a in a in a you know in a forest setting where there's there's branches, there's trees, there's movement, there's leaves, I don't know you I, again. I think they could, it'd be very easy to be missed, but very yeah. cool. It's yeah. a step. I mean, it's just another step, but it's people obviously looking into possibilities and, and there's no batteries. There's no, there's no technology uh, other than the fabrication of it. So that's fantastic. Even the little one would be cool. I mean, you know, I mean, honestly, but the six foot one would be way cooler. How tall is this guy? Like five, two, if that's six foot, jeez. <laughs> Uh, not that there's uh, anything wrong with five two. It's nothing just nothing wrong with short people. You're all nothing up. wrong with short, uh, but it is interesting. So, yeah. anyway, that's our last story for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So, hope you guys learned something and uh, walking away with more information than you came, and you feel like you're ready to face the rest of your life a little better. So, let's get to the rest of the show. <laughs> OPR since 357. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Most trusted news. Brown chicken, brown cow, Neil says. Amen, brother. <laughs> so OPR, yeah, but it'll probably be in the back of a comic book. And they'll look like glasses with those spiral patterns on them, the little pinhole. That you can see out of. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what those Batman ones will look like, I'm sure. <laughs> um, hey, I own short. I own short, RL Merritt says. Nothing wrong with short, RL. <laughs> I uh, I have no problem with person's height. Brown chicken, brown cow. Love the news. Thank you, Karen. Invisible Soldier's been around since Gulf War. Fiber optic clothing. You know, Tommy, I remember seeing a video, ladies and gentlemen, Tommy, Tommy Cooper, Cooper if I could talk, that might help. Tommy Cooper is in the house, and he is, of course, from Cryptovania, uh, another wonderful show and channel. And check out their Facebook page and and YouTube. But uh, You're they're, they're they're wonderful guys. Known them for years. Tommy, I remember seeing a video years ago, and I brought it up on the show uh, a few weeks ago. But I remember seeing it back in 
2007, 2008, 2009 era on like YouTube. And maybe it was closer to 10. But anyway, it shows this tank in like the Middle East and it's parked in front of this, you know, kind of stucco kind of fencing area with a gate and stuff. And, and, and suddenly, you know, coming into frame is this cloaked person. It's a humanoid figure running along, running along, climbs up on the tank and then dives into the, into the top hatch and then is just gone. And I remember that making the rounds and people being like, what the hell is this? What did they have? Do you remember that? Let me know, Tommy, if you remember seeing that. I ordered a tube of blood. Tube of fake blood in an indestructible egg and from the comic books. No x-ray glasses, though. <laughs> I think I ordered the x-ray glasses, but I'm sure I screwed up the the mailing address or the return address. And I ended up stuffing the envelope full of pennies, I think, because that's about all I had. And I don't think they liked that much at all. hundred pennies with one stamp. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that ended up on the floor of the post office. They went, what in the hell is written with like bad pencil or crayon? <laughs> yes. Tommy remembers it. Yes, I do too. And I remember everybody going, what was that? Now this is back when there wasn't a lot of, uh, I don't know how to say it, but like there wasn't a lot of home video editing suites available. Like, you know, for somebody to have put it together. Now, granted, it's kind of filmed on a pretty low-res image or uh, low-quality image nowadays, but at the time, it was what YouTube was in. And it might have been 480 or 7... Not It wasn't even 720, I don't think. But it was, you know, what we had. And, and, and it looked convincing. It looked really convincing. It looked like footage out of, like, Desert Storm, uh, or Desert Shield or whatever back then. But it looked like somebody was running around with the cloaked, you know, cloaked fatigues or something. They just weren't visible, but you could make out the silhouette of a person. So I don't even know. It might even still be out there. Yeah, Tommy says, that's the one. Yep. It might still be out there if anybody's an internet sleuth or a YouTube sleuth, if you could look that up, a uh, cloaked soldier uh, or something. See if you can find it. I think that's, uh, it's very, I guess we could look, Sheldon. I'm uh, looking right now. Are you? And it's got a tank in it, and, and it does seem to suggest that somebody had some footage of uh, what looks like a cloaked soldier jumping oh, into a, it. Huh? This might be it. You might have found it? Maybe. Okay, Maybe. let me know. Potato cam. Yeah, everything's a potato cam, yeah. <laughs> it's fiber optic reactive camouflage, Ron the Sage says. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I, that sounds like a fancy name, and, and it probably does utilize fiber optics. That would make sense if it's... Oh, uh, I think this is it. Yeah, I'm going to post it in the chat, and then you can look at it too. Okay, yeah, please do. It's really horrible quality, but it's the only one I could find. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll know as soon as I see it if it is. Uh, might be. Let me just quick note things here. I don't know. This one's different, I think. Maybe not. Videos. Let's see. I'm just watching it. Well, that guy popped out of nowhere. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, no, maybe that is it. Maybe that is that. It's on the Andy Bell channel. What the hell did I just do? 3.2. 3.21 subscribers. 21K. Okay. Yeah, and this is... I guess it was by... That that's I think that's definitely one of our tanks. Is that an Abrams tank or something? I don't know. Interesting. All right. Well, let's let's play it. I'll put it on screen for you guys. You can see it and see what you think. Um, I don't know what channel this is. I don't know other than the person. What channel was it? Did I say? Andy this Bell. Andy Bell channel. Okay. All right, I'll put it on screen. You guys can see it. Again, I'm not making any definitive statements, but I remember seeing this years and years and years and years ago and being like, what the hell? So here's the footage, and there isn't any sound that I know of. Again, there's a little clip that goes on here because this stops and suddenly a guy appears here, and I think that's just edited footage like there. Unless he phased in. I don't know what the hell that was, but here it comes. Thank God for the red circle. 
It's red, red circles have been saving the day forever. <laughs> See, he's just laying up there. Is he going in? He doesn't look as hidden, though. But when he first came up, it did, though, didn't it? Yeah, I, I, if it wasn't for that circle, I wouldn't have seen him. Yeah. But well, then again, that's what I'm saying. The, the quality is horrible. So it's, yeah, it, it really is. But this is old YouTube quality. Yeah, because it's totally hidden there. Now, it could be just an issue with the frame rate because even, even home security cameras can give these ghostly-like images. Yeah. Um, so it's not without possibility that it's just low quality. And it doesn't look like our camera um, because I have no idea what any of this says. I don't uh, don't know how to write Arabic or read it. So, yeah, SoCal Squatcher saying it could be a frame rate glitch. Yeah, it's, it's possible because he is traveling pretty fast around it, and the frame rate with it. Yeah. Yeah, and that other person kind of popped in here just suddenly. Oh, there goes the tank turning. So, I don't know what this guy's saying, but I'm just seeing if there's anything else. That was that's basically the meat and taters of it. So, I don't know. You be the judge again. I don't know. I'm not saying it is or isn't, but I remember seeing a video similar to that. I don't think, I don't think that's the exact one, but it's very similar. The guy kind of runs from the right of the frame into the frame, but it's more of a day, uh, more more sunny kind of uh, situation. But again, you be the judge. Could be potatoes. Always potatoes, Lane. We we love potatoes. Everybody <laughs> loves taters. Taters. That's Tater's precious. You and you in Idaho over there. I'm in Tater World. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think they do Taters here as much anymore, though. I th- it used to be the southern part of the state, but I think, I don't know. I don't know if all the Tater car- agriculture is still happening here or not. But, all right, there you go. Tater's uh, uh, as gratin. <laughs> Making that tomorrow for sure. Well, now you made me hungry. Thank you. Appreciate that. Did I mention I'm on a diet? Did anybody remember that? <laughs> Keep mentioning food to you. <laughs> yeah, you guys are just killing me. They're not even nice. Oh, jeez. Oh, <clears> stop. So long. That's what all gratin means. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know. I just... Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Potatoes all gratin means like with cheesy potatoes. Yep. Oh, so good. Yep, I know. I know. Potato salad. Oh. Guess what I can't eat? right now <laughs> oh that's right you can't teeters oh, no. yeah don't need the starchy carbs trying to lose weight dude but just once a month why not yeah no, i know i give myself cheat days don't get me wrong but i'm still i'm still always wanting taters that's right guys keep mentioning food <laughs> jesus <laughs> how you guys love me yeah, look take your dog just had pizza brent smiley face <laughs> rich creamy butter in the potatoes Ooh. <laughs> I didn't know you guys were here to torment me. I thought you loved me. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> All right. Enough of this. Enough of this abuse. I can abuse you with more I- I- incredible stories instead. At least that's my take. Yeah. All right. Let me pull up the Rumble chat because I got even Elaine's joining it. Elaine. Elaine. No, you are pure. E2, <laughs> Elaine. Jeez, I'm like Caesar here, and you guys are driving in the the shanks. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you people? <laughs> Thirty more stabs. We got Caesar. <laughs> I had a poke bowl. What the hell's a poke bowl? But I don't know. But it sounds good. Carnivore it's, diet is a great uh, thing. I I don't mind the carnivore diet. It's just that I I do miss my car. I miss my pasta. I miss my my taters. You know, oh, pasta. Z- shut up. Just shut oh. up. You're just. <laughs> You're gonna lose mic privileges tonight too. You can, <laughs> you can just smile and wave. I will. You want? Sheldon, you can be the sign language interpreter. <laughs> no middle fingers, please. <laughs> All right, let's get to some other stuff that doesn't involve food. God, I hope it doesn't involve food. Yes. The minion pe- Oh, reminds me. For my tr- for my cheat meal, I have a donut upstairs. <laughs> I think I just need to go take a nap. <laughs> I think I'm done with this show for tonight. 
Last one. All right, I'm done. Okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there um, you go. What the hell was this? What the, oh, this is artifacts. I remember this. You know, this might be okay to talk about. Might be okay to talk about. We haven't, we haven't revisited these for a while. And uh, I like covering the strange and unusual stuff here on the on the paranormal portal. Let me see what time it is. It's eight oh seven. Yeah, we can we can discuss. If maybe I'll maybe I'll save these for tomorrow though, because it is after eight, and we do have a ton of creature reports to get to. What was this one? That one was it as well as well as this. I just got a lot of stuff pulled up. I'm sorry, folks. I tell you what, you're right. What? You're right. Cauliflower crust pizza is yummy. There have you, you had that? Still pizza. I have before, yeah. See, I've not heard much. Like, I hear about the almond flour and stuff like that. Most people say that's like dog food. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I've been... I, any, God damn it, this isn't the Food Network. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's turned into the Food Channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aussie Tiger. Welcome to the Paranormal Pantry. <laughs> Jesus I was talking for Easter. I had chocolate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh my god, that's that's a little too much for me. Holy Hope the Easter bunny left you a toothbrush. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be pulling out stumps. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, you guys are getting my lungs cleared out. That's for sure. <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, we're gonna start with the cryptids, I guess, because it's already after eight. Believe it or not. That's how quickly it rolls. Tomorrow we're going to cover some uh, out of place artifacts, Art of, artifacts out of place, oop arts, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about those a little bit tomorrow. Can can washed potatoes and prime rib be possessed? <laughs> <clears throat> they can be possessed by me. Mashed taters. I thought he said washed. I said it's mashed potatoes. Yes, they are. They are the food of the devil. But I, I love that Make, food. No, just because I'm on a diet, I just gotta, I gotta be hateful about all that stuff right now. It's not fair. But that can easily possess me any day. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. All right. <laughs> Everyone's talking about food. Fuck. How did I lose control of this show so quick? All food. What's your guys' favorite meal? Go ahead. No, don't. You're not helping. <laughs> What's your favorite meal? God, sorry, couldn't <laughs> join us any longer, Sheldon. I'm sorry you had to go. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you guys? I'm trying to really get my life together and healthy, and you guys are just taunting me like it, like it's a pinata of potatoes in front of me. Oh, Lance's lasagna. Oh, oh God. Continue. Go ahead. Before I get distracted. Before we get distracted, we're <laughs> freaking deep into distracted right now. Oh my god! All right, let's continue. I'm trying to figure out where the it's hell this the starts. Stray sand effect. Stray sand effect. <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> oh god. All right, let's continue. This is a short one, uh, starting out from uh, Sasquatch Chronicles blog, but it has a video. And it's from Sasquatch Chronicles uh, YouTube channel, so <clears throat> we're gonna check that out. But this is comes from April fourth. Not really cryptids as much as it is some kind of UFO -y thing going on, but it's strange objects over Scottsdale, Arizona. What the hell? Arizona gets a lot of weird lights and stuff. Uh, of course, uh, that's the sightings of uh, the Phoenix lights. Uh, of course, in Arizona. And other adjoining uh, communities and, and bordering states, that, believe it or not, that sightings kept going for quite a while. But this one is from April 4th, Strange Objects Over Scottsdale. A listener writes, taken in Scottsdale, Arizona, my girlfriend is the one filming, while I ran down the street to get a closer look. The UFO appearing to be four or five blocks away, not very far from our house. We're looking south, and if I were to guess, the UFO is appearing right over Scottsdale Airport, which is a private airport for extremely wealthy people. That's a whole other topic, though. Anyway, let me know what you think of this video. And here it is from Sasquatch Chronicles' uh, YouTube channel. Let's check it out. There it is. A little crickets. What's that in the sky? Hopefully there's no cussing. If there is, I apologize. 
Interesting. Not seen any video. What's that? No, oh yeah, no, no. I I screwed that up, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even put it on screen. <laughs> Let's try that again, folks. Yes, <laughs> well, welcome to the the rookie hour here on the paranormal portal. See what you did with that food stuff? You got me all verklempt. It's all distracted. I know. It's all the Streisand effect taking me. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but it sounds terrible. All right, sounds like a bad rash. Uh, there's it's the video. The sky. That is wild. Look at that, two circling. Then one just disappears. I don't know. Could that just be those skydivers that use those ankle flares? Look at that smoke trail or whatever. Isn't that too bright for that? That's No. Isn't that way too bright for a, little, for a flare? No. Uh-uh. Like, it's, it's radiating that. Yeah, but look at it. It's got a trail. It's got a trail that's dropping sparks and stuff. That's... I thought I don't think that's a UFO. And I think that the other one just kind of burned out. They don't last forever. What is that? that could be There's a bunch of them. I only see two. No offense to the people that actually recorded this. Very cool that they did. It looks like he got another one lit or something. I just don't buy that it's a UFO. It's I think circling. Yeah, I mean it's like two skydivers circling and they're probably on descent. They probably open their chutes and they're just dragging a trail of light. But that that smoke trail was what really did. And now if it flies off, <clears throat> if it flies off, that will remove my skepticism. But right now, it looks like a flare or something like that. How it has a trail and stuff. So yeah, I'm I don't know. Um, interesting video, but I think it's more than likely some sort of night skydiving exercise. What do you guys think? Paper lantern could be princess lion. Could be those uh, ceremonial Chinese lanterns. Yeah. That lit on fire at one point, maybe. Yeah, there is night skydiving, uh, Rachel. It, it's they they do actually have like flares attached to their legs. Uh not like whatever the UFO is in Orlando. Yeah. Uh, doing the old classic night jump. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, yeah, again, too, I could be wrong. What? It's too like dramatic. What is? Like to be a UFO, like how it circles and it's got a trail behind it. It's almost like. Yeah. The trail is the killer for me because I mean, yeah. UFOs are, are technological. They're not, you know, burning gunpowder or, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, um, flammable object that would consume and, and then fade out. It yeah. literally looks like a flare to me. Could be uh, some flares, like from uh, another source, but uh, my first guess, the way it was circling, they're both circling each other. It looks like a, some kind of, um, you know, skydiving exercise to me. So Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. But, it, you know, it's still a great capture, and, and it's cool that they saw it, but I don't think it's as close as he was saying, like a couple blocks from the house. I think it was much further away. But I, again, when it's in the sky, it's hard to judge distances, especially at night, you know, because you don't have the same kind of depth understanding of what you're looking at. So, I mean, the skies, uh, the stars are uh, billions of light years away, and yet they look like they're, you know, just hanging up on on uh, the ceiling somewhere, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So those look like cheap brand Chinese salt pe saltpeter foot sparklers. Yeah, you could be right, NKD. I don't know, but in any case, certainly not a UFO. I don't think. That's my take on it. Could be wrong, but that's my take. Um, but very cool, though, all the same. I think these things are great to look at. And, and here's the thing. I don't think these people are, are... They're only representing they saw something they didn't know. They think it might be a UFO. They're not, they're not um, hoaxing. I don't, I don't like giving airtime to hoaxers and, and people that are just genuinely lying and they know it. That kind of stuff drives me crazy, and it, and it does nothing but hinder the motion and, and the, uh, the, the efforts of a lot of people in the field. But people like this are just capturing something they don't know what the hell they're looking at, and that's fair enough. I mean, that's honest. And so they put it out there, and, and at that point, you got to accept people's explanations as a possibility. Again, we, all of us have a confirmation bias. We, have, we want to have captured something incredible. 
that's amazing. And it, and it, everybody wants to make an impression like I did this, this is what I did. And, but mm -hmm. I don't think that they captured anything, uh, UFO -y. I think they just captured something that was, uh, uh certainly a, a light anomaly, but it's our light anomaly. It's not of the, uh, uh of, from the stars or anywhere else. Yeah. <clears throat> Just normal. Nothing to see here, folks. Yeah, too fantastical. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to the next one from Sasquatch Chronicles tonight. And uh, this is this one's called Tracks I Cannot Debunk. And here we go. Um, very cool. Again, from April 4th. That was yesterday, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. My wow. oldest brother's birthday yesterday. There you go. Oh, it was. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it was Uncle Jeff's birthday. Oh. Yep. He got another year older. And as Naysay would say, another lap around the sun. That's right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Tracks I cannot debunk. A listener writes, I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I've been listening to your show since the very beginning. It's been fun seeing your podcast grow. I've been on the fence about contacting you because I've been trying to debunk what I saw since it happened. There is an image here, but I don't know what the hell it's an image of. And it says every once in a while, I'll just think about the prints that I saw. I wonder what the heck the were those to be honest. I'm kind of hoping you'll look at the pictures and say something like, Oh yeah, those are commonly mistaken for Bigfoot tracks. I see those all the time. And this happened back in February of 2023. I work in advertising, making TV commercials mostly. When COVID hit in 2020, my business was shut down and all the jobs we lined up to shoot canceled. My wife at the time and still today works at a private school. And although they shut down in the spring of 2020, they were back in the classrooms by the fall of 2020. The school needed some video work done. And since I was out of work, I said, sure. I turned in, it turned into a regular gig. One day I was shooting some student teacher interviews in an upper floor of a wing to a building with, that isn't really in use. In fact, it's supposed to be haunted, but that's another story. Sounds like a good story. The woman that I work with at the school had gone to get the next group to be interviewed. And at the same time, I got a call from my producer. And as I spoke on the phone, I paced around the room looking out the windows to the outside. And I happened to glance down at the snow and saw tracks. And the first thing that caught my attention was that these tracks had a ridge in the middle of what looked like a footprint. This made me think immediately of Dr. Jeff Meldrum's mid tarsal break or hinge, <clears throat> just saying, and that I'd seen in the prints online or in other shows. Once I was done with my call, I took some pictures of the prints from the second story window. By that time, a new group had come and gotten ready to shoot another round of teachers and students. I was so intrigued by what I saw, but kept telling myself it didn't make sense because the school is located in a suburb of Minneapolis. The next morning, a Saturday, I told my wife what had happened and showed her the pictures, and she immediately said, they were snowshoe prints and uh, that the students had had a snowshoe event about a week ago, uh, a week and a half ago. I said, yeah, I thought about that, but I told her I could see snowshoe tracks as well as other regular people tracks from the vantage point I was at in the second floor. And those were different. Well, she agreed. And I said, I want to grab a tape measure and go drive out there right now and look at what I saw on the ground level. So, we did. We went back out there, and these tracks were about five to six feet apart. Oh, well, that's a hell of a stride. Mm -hmm. Definitely not snowshoes. Jeez. <clears throat> and uh, so what the hell? What, what does that? I know based on your show and testimonials that I've heard, these things are places you would never imagine, but in Mendota Heights, Minnesota, I'm still not convinced that an actual Bigfoot made these prints, but... I'm just puzzled still to this day. I took lots of pictures and video and I'll share some of it in this email. Let me know what you think. Yeah, there's the strides. 
uh, we don't see it. Oh yeah, you don't, do you? Okay. Gosh. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. There's there's the first image. Otherwise, it was just the, uh, you know, just words. So you didn't miss anything of words, but. Oh, that's a huge distance there. That really is, especially for snow. You know, and and if it was snowshoes, you know, basically if you watch somebody snowshoe and they're basically shuffling, they're not making huge leaps generally. There's, but the problem here's the, there is that that mid tarsal, what looks like what would be a mid tarsal hinge. Oh God, it does. Because there's the toes. Uh, this would be the heel, and then this, when the foot flexes, our foot flexes here, so you see the bunch up right up towards the toes. Would but it be more indented, like just flattened well, out because of how heavy they are. We have no idea. Well, I mean, first of all, the ground is frosted. We don't know how deep this snow is. It might just be a do, you know an inch or two. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's mm. speculation, but we don't know. I mean, if this is three feet of snow, then yeah, that, that doesn't seem very deep. You can even see the, t uh, if you look at that bottom picture, the second one, you can even see the two little toe dots. Up here? Up on the top? Um, we're at the, uh, yeah, yeah, yep. Uh, uh, well, no, above that even. Oh, no, that's just, I'm sure that's not toe dots. This is where the toes would be. Right. Oh, I see now. So I that's see. why he's measuring from here, like a big toe. It looks like a gotcha. big toe point. Now, the interesting thing is, is looking close in at this, this foot is 17 inches. That's, that's a huge. huge. That's a huge, huge foot. Oh, my gosh. That actually could be. Yeah, it really could that's be. That's so close to. Where you are? Like, well, <laughs> I mean, it's right next to a building. So, like, it's just yeah. right there, you know. And and the end, here's the trackway and look at how oh look at how directly in line those prints are. Oh my gosh, that actually could be. It really wow. could be. You really could have found the real deal. That's pretty incredible. You wouldn't That's think true. about it in such an urban area, but uh, again, there's been sightings allegedly in Detroit of all places, which is incredible. So we've, I we even read like me not. Well, at least not as far as like the shows I've been on, but mm -hmm. we've we've read shows where like it's in neighborhood areas. They're, they're yes, people were here and stuff. Suburban areas, yeah. yeah, it comes up, but that that really is is incredibly in line. So, oh my god! Yeah, and each consistent. one has that build up right there. You know that that ridge yep. pushback from when it pushed off. Those are huge strides. My God, that must have been, a, uh, would you say, eight foot or more, maybe? Tall? Yeah, I, yeah, it's anybody's guess. I don't know. I don't. It, I mean, it would sounds like it's a big one. If it's 17-inch yeah. track, that's a huge, huge foot. And, you know, I don't know how, if their feet are always in proportion with their actual size, but, yeah, that's pretty incredible. It doesn't look like it's real deep snow. in though. general. Like yeah. How long of a stride that is. Yeah, the length of the stride is what I find most interesting because here, here's the thing, you know. Um, I mean, we walk in snow all the time. But even when we're walking on, on clean sidewalks and stuff, our stride is a couple feet, three feet maybe at the most. And that's at a pretty, you know, brisk stride. But I would say a couple feet just generally walking or, you know, having a decent pace. But you know, five or six feet is huge. And this isn't, doesn't look like a running stride. It's just, you know, I mean, each one is pretty, pretty uh, impressive, you know, yeah, as far eight, as those, those strides are, I could be, <clears throat> I could lay in between those strides. Yeah. I mean, literally that's a hell of a yeah. stride. So somebody here says, Michelle B says, I live in Minnesota and I've heard of reports in the river Valley in that area. And Linda B says, if they're in Kansas, they're in Minnesota. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, one, one more thing, since you have listened from the beginning, you know uh, you have heard, and so have I, the woo side of things. If tracks can start and stop without a beginning or really an end and appear out from nowhere, they can appear anywhere, as in having a paranormal side. Well, that's certainly uh, some people believe that. Uh, oh, my God. 17 Squatcher. What? Sorry. Uh, SoCal Squatcher says, your stride is typically your shoulder width. Really? For human beings? Huh. Okay. Uh, maybe. Could be. If he's, wow. if he's right, then that's, that's insane. 
Well-balanced, too. Most humans are clumsy the walking through the snow. Good point, OPR. I would agree. Yeah, that's the other take, is that they are directly in line. When we're walking on snow, it's generally, <laughs> you know, our, our, I, I, think, I think that our strides end up being, like, very deliberately side to side just because it's not a firm strata. It's more squishy, and, you know, we become more prone to imbalance, so we widen our strides just naturally. But those are just dead in line, you know. And people just don't walk that way. Um, I mean, other than possibly some uh, First Nations. Uh, I remember hearing reports of First Nations people walking very linearly like that as well. Uh, and it was even suggested years and years ago that that's why um, they, they do, they've done so well in construction on like high rises and stuff because they can walk on those girders without much problem because they're used to walking linearly like that. Uh, again, it's an old, old thing that I remember hearing when I was younger. I don't know if there's any precedence to that or any validity to it, but, I, you know, it is an interesting take. Yeah. 17 to 18 inches long, maybe half that in width. It, could, uh, it well could be. Actually, this is a really good photo from the second floor and shows a straight line of tracks which immediately rules out snowshoes. Plus, snowshoes would not make the mid-tarsal ridge, absolutely, which is easy to discern. Looking at a map of this area, the Mississippi River or tributaries are not all that far away and would be an avenue to get in and out of this area at night, uh, At night, of course. I'll bet there are other homeowners in this area that are found these tracks and are scratching their heads of what this could be. I'm glad you decided to send this into Wes. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Um, yeah, that's incredible. Think, I'm, I'm just, just dying to know how far this trackway went. Did it just abruptly end, or did it you know, hit a road and then it just didn't leave tracks anymore, or what happened? Oh, true. Again, not enough info. I wish there was more information rather than that. Not that there's not enough, but I wish there was more. Yeah. I will say this with, with snow tracks, and this is the liability, that if they're not fresh... They do have a tendency to expand as they melt. That's so true. A human yeah. footprint can suddenly become gigantic in snow if it's, if it's in warmer season and it's starting to melt. It, it, it will expand out and make it look gigantic. But it doesn't explain the mid-tarsal, you know, the mid-tarsal heap that we're oh, seeing God. on these. Yeah. You know, saying the magic it's... word, win a pack of jerky, squishy. I don't know what you're talking about, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, what are you talking about? <laughs> the, I think it was on Jessica Jones' show earlier last week. This was? Okay. I don't know. Uh, unless Digger's talking about something else. I think my stride is bigger than my shoulders. I have small shoulders. Could be wrong, though, because I walk fast because I'm used to keeping up with taller people, which is pretty much everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you might be right, Karen. You're, you're I mean, you're... You're, you're, you're diminutive, but you know, I think you're a force of nature. Just saying. Even if someone were to say that, that is, you know, I think this is kind of what you were saying anyway, but I mean, no matter what that stride, how long that stride is, is nuts. Yeah. That that much distance is pretty incredible. I mean, that's, that's a significant spread. Um, Again, this doesn't look like very thick snow though. It looks like no. uh, that crusty crap, you know, that, that it, when it's kind of melted down, but it's frozen. It freezes over down. Yeah. And it just becomes crusty, uh, like a couple inches of crusty or an inch of crust. Yeah. Um, so m- perhaps that's why the, the tracks are not really pristine. But, you know, I mean, you can't make out individual, like, toe pad indentations you can just vaguely see that there's something resembling a toe here i just think it's a great catch though um and it could have been rigid enough that a person could walk on this and not make much indent but uh with this weight it definitely left a real clear trackway it's just weird what did tommy say tommy says i have a snow track and a picture from an expedition if you want them i yeah i'd love to see them if you if you could uh Send them through over Facebook or something. Maybe I can pull them up. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, snow tracks. Yeah, I think snow tracks in a picture from an expedition. That'd be great. Yeah, I think I think snow tracks are amazing. I, I think it's 
it's a great medium. Now it's a tough medium to cast, but with the advent of LIDAR, you could scan these and uh, oh, yeah. scan each one individually and get all kinds of detail. And, and you could actually make a 3D printing of it, you know, on a, on a 3D printer. So now, that, just for anyone who doesn't know, including a reminder for me, is LIDAR that technology that you showed me when I last visited? Yeah, it's what I scanned your cast with. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'll pull it up so you guys can see, but Sheldon got uh, a casting uh, uh, from Dr. Jeff Meldrum. So cool. Such a, the best cast he had. It was so awesome. It really was, and here it is. I, I wish I could put it up on screen. In a, I wonder if I can export this somehow. But I'll put it up here, and you guys can see if I can get it close enough. Close enough, but let me do this. Let me do this. This will make it easier. Oh, yep, there it is. There's the casting. And with LiDAR, I, could, I can rotate this, zoom in on it. I'll try. And see the details of this casting. Yeah. It's a 3D model represented completely. It's super cool technology, I agree. Yeah. But it makes it makes the idea of casting in snow possible, you know? Whereas yeah, so this is with lidar from my iPhone. And the cast is from 1982 Gray Harbor, Gray's Harbor, Washington. This cast was originally made by a law enforcement officer. And uh, Sheldon has this actual cast, and I did a, I did a LIDAR scan of it because I was like, God, that is so brilliant. It's the same trackway that the one that I got from Cliff is from that I've shown you guys. <clears throat> I, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get the casting that I got. Because uh, Rachel asks, can you recommend the LIDAR app? Um, it's called Scaniverse. Uh, as a free one from the App Store on uh, Google. It's just scan, I, and then V-E-R-S-E. And the nice thing is, I wish I could show you a bigger picture. Maybe I'll export this to Blender and kind of give you guys an idea. But you can actually, you know, look at this print, click the measure button, click on the heel, and then click on the toe, and it'll give you an actual measurement of how big that is. And then you can do the same thing for the width right here in the phone as if you're measuring it right on your desk, the actual print. But I'll get the, I'll get the casting that I got from Cliff Berrickman from the same trackway so you can see the size of this. And I've shown it on the show recently before, but I'll be right back. <clears throat> it's just over here. Okay. Oops. God, I almost tripped. That would have been stupid. All right, I'm setting it on the desk because i got to get my headphones back on. I, You know, I know everybody has an idea like, God, is a big track. God, is a big track. I think this one's like 16 inches. This is what a 16-inch foot looks like next to my head. This is, again, from the same trackway, the Grays Harbor. But this is what that is. This is, this is my hand. I, I wish I could get my foot up this high, but I'm not so flexible <laughs> anymore. But this is how big that foot is. And your it's forearm just... forearm is the same length as your foot. My forearm is? Yep, from your wrist all the way down to your elbow is the length of your foot. Well, there you go. There's what I have size 11 shoes. Uh, I'm not quite there. There we go. So you can see that this is way bigger. But that's a huge freaking foot. I mean, if this kicked you in the head, you wouldn't have a head. <laughs> <laughs> if Bigfoot ever figured out Kung Fu, we'd all be dead. I'm just saying. How are you going to block this? <laughs> so I don't know. But I, I think it, you know, it's, it's hard to really grasp. Well, how big does that look like? This is how big. I mean, this is this is how big. Freaking crazy. 
enormous. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy enormous. So, I mean, I don't know. Again, this is the this is the way the portal works. We just talk about whatever we talk about. But, hey, guys, I had to read a story to my puppy. Oh, okay. Well, is your puppy doing okay? Is he happy? Does he like stories? What kind of story your puppy like? I want to know more about this. That's pretty cool. It is. A about the same size foot as mine. I'm seven, seven foot two. Seriously? What? RJ, you're seven foot two. There, are you actually that tall? <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I don't mean to sound bad. I just that's awesome. If you are, I think that's cool. you're you're enormous, brother. I think we I need to, in a bad way. I think it's cool. You should be the new predator, man. <laughs> yeah. Get you in that predator suit. That'd be awesome. I don't know. I think that's about the size of the guy that was uh, in the Arnie movie and, and uh, several of the Predator movies. No, it's a joke. Oh, that's okay. not funny. I was I'm all impressed. So you could have <laughs> easily had me there. Yeah, I was. Yeah, you had me on the ride. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But again, until you see one of these casts, and if you ever get a chance to go to a Bigfoot show that Jeff Meldrum is at, Cliff Barrickman or Michael Freeman. They all have some really incredible casts. Michael Freeman actually has some hand casts, too, that his dad, Paul Freeman, had taken. And when you see the size of those those digits, it's just like, my God, you know, they're, they're enormous. It's like, you know, th- four or five times the size of my hand. Now, I have a big palm. I just got really stubby fingers. But, I mean, those those fingers are like brats. They are just huge. I inherited those. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine. I didn't mean mine. I'm in Bigfoot fingers. Mine are the size. Mine, mine are size. short and stubby too. Yeah, like I know. Fans. It's kind of a family trait. Yeah, we're good for uh, slapping, just not shaking. Shaking hands. <laughs> yeah. We're good slappers, though. All right, I gotta set this over here. Ugh. Gently. All right, so Sasquatch Outpost in Bailey, Colorado, has some uh, epic casts too. Great folks over there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and granted, you know, like. Cliffs North American Bigfoot Center is a great place to go check out all kinds of these things. Uh, if you're ever over in Oregon, boring Oregon, you can go check that out. Um, certainly, there's there's many people around the country. Probably Tommy's got a few casts over there from he and Jason's outings and and their research. But yeah, it's pretty pretty incredible. I got to see if if Tommy sent something over. Nope. Jeez, there's some tall people. Karen, this is my nephew, six seven for real. And Annie says my cousin is six seven point five. Oh my gosh. There are some big people out there. I mean, I'll tell you what. This is kind of a side note, but I I was blown away because in Minnesota, I felt like I was you know average to you know the upper average size. Yeah. I came out here to the north of Idaho, and there's some mountain people out here. I mean, they look like they belong. You can tell these people are just built tough and they're tall like six foot three seems to be like the average height and that's a good you know four inches five inches taller than me i think it used to be four inches but now it's about five inches taller than me and there's some guys that are in the six and a half range many guys up here they're just giant yeah i don't know what it is maybe it's just by virtue of being from this area kind of like you know the the bergman's rule you guys heard of bergman's rule bergman's rule is a biological rule that the further away from the equator you move, uh, a species becomes larger. But the closer towards the equator that that same species becomes smaller. Yeah. yeah. And that's Bergman's rule. It's a biological uh, rule that they've established. It's the yeah, Idaho yeah. taters. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, we're not going there again. We're done with taters. <laughs> Sheesh, you guys. We're going to leave the taters alone. But that's a great cast or a great trackway uh, images that we caught there from Sasquatch Chronicles. I think the guy's brilliant for taking those photos. Yeah, I can understand the reluctance to go public about things like this because it's in Mendota Heights. And if you're familiar with Mendota Heights, it's not like the middle of the woods. It's a very ur- uh, uh, suburban area of the Twin Cities. So it's not the place that many would think of finding Sasquatch. But I will tell you that I firmly believe that these things have adapted really well in our presence. Not all of them, but I think some of them have learned 
the low-hanging fruit is right in there in the cities. And so they may live uh, in the suburban or outskirts areas and just travel in during the night when everybody's quiet and sleeping and probably run around and grab stray animals and, and foods from dumpsters and then go back out to wherever they're living and just, you know, rinse, repeat every day. I, I think that they, they've learned to take advantage of our wasteful natures and our probably complacency because nobody's looking for them in the suburbs. They're looking in the woods. They're looking in the deep woods. And, you know, um, I think it's surprising when they do pop up in those close areas to our, you know, urban centers. There's uh, less pressure closer to the poles. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that, OPR. Very cool. Ah, uh, very cool. But yeah, I, I, I think that they do move in. They move in and take advantage of, of the easy pickings. Well, I, I mean, then again, it's hmm. like the more we expand, the less there is for them to go. Well, yeah, I mean, it might just be because they have no choice. They may have ancestrally used Mendota Heights, you know, for thousands of years. But it suddenly became homes and, and shopping centers and stuff. And all of a sudden it's like, well, still our land. We're going to use it. Um, because, yeah, I mean, there is that. Hey, Jaron, good to see you, brother. Thanks for coming in. Instead of five raccoons in a trench coat, it's one Bigfoot in a what are you looking at hair coat. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? Quit busting my chops, huh? That's right. I'm saying, could be. Yeah, it's interesting, interesting ideas. So, anyway, that was that. What do we got for time? We're already at so, 8.43. So, so Kale Squatch says, there is a video of a small juvenile Squatch from here in La Crescenta. La Crescenta. La Crescenta. And we are in the foothills of Los Andros. I never thought they could be here, but I'm learning they are all over the place. Yeah, it's crazy. Is that the one where the mom comes and carries it away? Is that the one you're talking about, SoCal? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty compelling video, too, and actually uh, pretty interesting. A lot of people say, oh, that's CGI. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. But if it not is... Every, not everything can be CGI. I know, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's like the quick, the quick knee-jerk reaction. Your voice sounds way better. Thanks, Jaren. Appreciate it. I think I'm getting better. I still got crap coughing up, but, yeah. I lived out that way, Barbara says. Um, uh, but I, I am getting better. Thanks, brother. But the, the, the thing with CGI is it's become this knee-jerk reaction to naysayers and people that want to just, you know, cast dispersions. Oh, it's not real. It's just CGI. If you're not familiar with doing CGI, if you're matching CGI builds with an actual footage, it's double tough to get the lighting right to get it to blend in correctly, the same pixelization rate, the same exposure rates. Everything has to be seamless. Otherwise, it's blindingly obvious that it's not real. It's okay. tough to do convincing CGI. To animate a character, like a, animating a character, is already tough, even in, a, even in a CGI environment. But then you take that same, that same CGI character and try to put it in to actual video footage that you recorded, that's tough. Um, there's, a re there's a reason most UFO videos uh, tend to be CGI because it's in the sky. It's easy there. You have no competing uh, lights or elements. You have nothing coming into frame or, or obscuring or you, know, you don't have to blend with foliage and stuff. It's very easy to put a UFO in the sky. Uh, and it's very easy to match night shots uh, because they're very dark. You can hide a lot of stuff. But if you're trying to do it in, in bright light, it's really, it's really tough. Well, even the technology of like deep fakes and stuff like that that have been progressing. I mean, you give, you give technology another five to ten years and it's going to be very hard to distinguish fake sure. from real videos it's getting oh, harder yeah. and harder ai ai will, will do a great job i'm sure uh hello brent finally got a chance to watch thank you the compass good to see you i'm glad you made it um what did rj say true and not everyone has access to it yeah it says real engine 5 but it's unreal engine yeah uh, unreal engine is great blender there's there's several of them 
Maya is another one. There's lots of different platforms, but Unreal Engine is this framework that a lot of games developers use and yeah. even special effects artists use a version of it, but it's a pro version, um, to create effect shots. And remember, the Hollywood effects are easy because they can set their stage to any lighting they want, and they have it all dialed in, and then they can transfer that digitally to uh, an AI or a, a, a CGI environment. They know where the lights are. They know the intensity of the lights, the f-stops, everything. So it's real easy to match and match. But when you're in when you're in nature, and you've got ambient light and and diffused light and uh, you know motion and stuff coming in. Matching a CGI character to that is a nightmare. You've got to be damn good at what you're doing. So, you know, people throw around, it's CGI. Like, it's just this easy armchair answer. But it's not an easy thing. And you have to have an incredible amount of knowledge and know-how to do that with a day shot in the woods. So, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not saying it can't be done. But I don't think as many people as claim CGI is actually true. You know what, actually... Uh, you actually know me as Will the Wayfinder. I've been on your podcast twice now. Yes, Will. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Good to see you on a live show. That's cool. Welcome in. Welcome. welcome. There's a YouTube channel, Corridor Crew. Yes, Rachel, good point. I watch their videos. They're very good, where they review oh, good and bad cool. CGI effects and discuss how it was done. Yeah, yeah and those guys are pros. I mean, they are pros at what they do. They've mm -hmm. been in the industry forever. Love to our paranormal peeps. Oh, my God. Glad you're feeling better, Brent. Just got done feeding 150 cowboys a crab feed. I did not get one invite. <laughs> I did not get an invite to that, Trace. Uh, I'm just saying. More food. <laughs> more food. More food. Glad to make the end of the show catch you on the replay. Absolutely, milady. <laughs> it's good to see you. I hope you've been wonderful. Uh, um, I'm sorry we geez. didn't make it over to uh Squatch Fest this year to uh, possibly bump into you again, but I hope things are wonderful. And uh, uh, Trees didn't even know. She just said that so innocently. So I know. Nice. She just came in and talked about food. We were just talking about food earlier and the fact that I'm on a pretty strict diet and uh, everybody's <laughs> throwing around potatoes, lasagna, pizza, things I can't eat. But I could eat crab. I'm just saying. Oh, crab. I could eat the hell out of some crab. <laughs> yeah. I know. Actually, when we were in Seattle, uh, Mrs. Portal and I and the Minion, we went to this place. What was it called? The Crab, the Crab Bowl or the Crab Bucket or something like that. And it's one of those restaurants where they bring out a big bowl of crab and shrimp and stuff, yeah. and they dump it on your table and they give you like, they give you like a wooden small wooden cutting board with a wooden mallet, and you just beat the hell out of everything and you open it and eat it and melted butter. It was so good. Oh, oh my like god that when to Florida. Oh, yeah god. it's so i'm so gonna have to eat something after the show you guys have so killed good. me <laughs> good job, yeah. Guys. <laughs> yeah good job yeah crayfish boil um actually my cousin paul makes a hell of a crawfish boil not sure where that one was but it maybe it was right in my lap maybe i got a lap dance didn't even know it um, but he made, he made this huge bowl of cra crayfish and he, you know, he got them, he, they were still alive. He had them shipped in. They, they were still alive and he prepped them, boiled them, did, did seasonings and stuff. It was just amazing. God, I ate like a pig. So <laughs> I'm with you about crayfish boils, crawfish, crawdads or whatever you want to call it, whatever you're from. They call them cra crayfish, crawdads, crawfish. I've heard all kinds of different names. Oh, I saw some pieces of crab legs on the boardwalk the other day walking our little dog. I don't think I'd be eating those, Karen. Just saying. No, no. Those, that sounds like a trap. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, find some carrots or celery. Yeah, that's not going to cut it anymore, Elaine. I'm so far past carrots and celery after this discussion tonight. <laughs> Probably going to go grab a stick of butter and just chew on it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna make them break oh my god yeah. crawdads where i'm from karen says good mini lobsters yeah they are little mini lobsters they're good but it's okay to be to be a gourmand for a day yeah no i i love i love good food that's my problem i love i love eating it's just my body metabolism quit on me about a 15 years ago and uh i've been paying the price ever since it's like forever 
I could eat whatever the hell I wanted and I'd stay about the same weight. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't ever like a chiseled uh, guy, but I was always a little pudgy, but I just was never really obese. But man, about, about 15 years ago, everything changed. <laughs> so sucking crab brains in the dark with butter and beer. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> James. <laughs> It's a good image, James. I appreciate that. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know what to say to that, James, except that just made me unhungry. <laughs> He's trying to help you. you gotta I appreciate that. I appreciate your love there. Um, That's hilarious. Brent, oh, Google yeah, the strike. Okay. Right. Rachel says, Google the strides in effect after the show. Isn't the strides in effect basically that when you're trying to hide something, but you announce that you're trying to hide it, but therefore people research into it more and therefore it becomes more aware than it would, would have otherwise. <laughs> okay. So Something you're like saying that. I sabotage myself. Is that what you're saying, Rachel? Thank Correct. you. Thank you. <laughs> Damn you me. I talking about food. Therefore, I was going to talk about food and then the thing that you don't <laughs> want happens happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm round due print. You are not Karen. You're a waif of a woman. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm working on it. You're doing fine. You look wonderful, Karen. Don't worry about it. I know. Cause I've seen you at several conferences. Ah, uh, damn cough. All right. How are we doing for time? Yeah. We're about done. Jeez. That's about all that we got time for ladies and gentlemen. It's just, that's the way the portal goes. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I love these shows where we just have fun and talk and throw around ideas and throw around, you know, pieces of information. Being round is the best shape. It keeps you rolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I like it. I started playing disc golf again for my workout. Very good. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, Trace. Always, I'm always around somewhere. Well, good. I hope so. I hope you never yeah. forget about us. It's like our it's like our old friend used to say, you know, yeah, round sure. is still a shape, so you're in shape. Yeah, that's right, Jim. You're talking <laughs> yes. about Jim. Yeah. I need to get in shape. Well, round is a shape. <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, Brent's going to eat savory shrimp now. I don't even think I have shrimp, so uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in the upper part of Idaho, so yeah. I mean, we can get shrimp here, but it's uh, not in my house right now. Uh, good night, everyone. Wizard Moon says, Oh, you just can't wait to get out of here. I'm Wizard. What's up? Jeez, with that? Okay, bye then. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to all those lurking. Yeah, how about we do shout outs quick, Sheldon? You guys don't go anywhere. We're doing shout outs quick, at least for YouTube. I'll look at uh, I'll look at uh, Rumble and see who's in there, and then I'll look at Twitch. So it's Barbara Mora, HB girl to you, that's Lucky Gypsy, and me are over there in uh, Rumble in the chat room anyway that I can see. And then I'll take a peek at Twitch just to see what the hell's been going on over there. Uh, let's see. Just me. Okay. Wow. All right. So who's in the YouTubes? Well, we got Annie Mantle, Aussie Tiger, Deb Varner, Tigger Dog, Elaine Clifford, Isaac, Ariola, James Omar, Omara, John Stevenson, Karen Alberting, Mary Wins. Miss Firejack, NKD2883, you're here. RJ Windwalker's here. Rachel's here. Sarah Ramirez is here. SoCal Squatcher, Stone Hobbit, The Compass, The Compass, and Therese Linnell and Wizard Moon 13. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. And thank everybody for being here. If you're just quietly sitting back and watching the show, that's okay too. That's legal here on the portal. You don't have to chat to be part of the family. We just want you to know we love you and thank you so much, everybody. Oh, Neil S. Sorry. Huh? Neil S. is in the chat. Neil Bye. S. Okay. How you doing, Neil? Thanks for coming in. We wouldn't have missed you, brother. <laughs> um, yeah. We, when you hit when you hit participants, it only gives us a list of the most recent chatters. So, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't show literally everyone. No, like unfortunately, we can't see the names of the people that are just kicking back watching, but uh, just know that it means the world to us that you're here. And uh, thank you to everybody who continues to let people know about these shows. Um, you know, I mean, I don't advertise them at all, but we still always have this wonderful group uh, that comes in and thank you for being a part of that. Thank you to those who share these streams out and share the announcements to uh, the shows out to their social media. That helps us out a ton. Uh, we've always grown by grassroots around here. I mean, there's just 
it's the way it's always been. And that's, that's actually the, the beautiful part of this is that, uh, you know, we're, we're not out there trying to wrangle a, an audience. You guys have all found us and made us part of your day. And, and that's just incredible. So that's the greatest audience ever. We don't have a huge group here, but we have an amazing group. All of you guys that's are wonderful. Right. So thank you for being a part of our world. Thank you for making the portal part of your world. And uh, keep an eye out. If you're not already a listener of the podcast, it's audio. Um, and you can find that on all the major platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, Google Play, Stitcher, CastBox, a ton of them, Pandora. Um, there's just so many out there. Just whatever you listen to podcasts, you get a phone, you get that, uh, that, you know, podcast button, whether it's Android or iPhone, just hit the podcast and then search for the paranormal portal and you will find it or just paranormal portal, not the paranormal portal. Sure. Um, and you'll find the podcasts and there's. Five seasons. We're just about to wrap up season number five in just a few weeks. So there's not a lot left. Then we're probably going to take a couple of weeks just so I can get some sanity because um, it's been a, just a marathon. When I do a season on the shows, just so you know, um, a season of the podcast is 52 episodes. It's not eight or 10 and stuff. And I'm not casting aspersions at those that do it that way. That's fine. And I more power to you. But I just always felt like, hey, a season is a year, and I'm going to give you a full year of podcasts. And so uh, that's what you're getting when you listen to the portal. And, uh, and as, as a reminder, the, mm -hmm. the, the podcast is not the same thing as the show. They are, oh, they yeah, are yeah, yeah. This thing. isn't the podcast. Just, so, just for any of you, thank you, Sheldon, for drawing that distinction. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, the podcast is interviews with people, whether they are uh, professionals in the fields, um, I just wrapped up an interview that I did just uh, yesterday with the grandson of Ed and Lorraine Warren and the, the head of the Warren Legacy Foundation. Uh, wonderful guy. We had a great discussion, both recording and for the show and before that for about 45 minutes. He's just a great guy and uh, had a wonderful, uh, insightful conversation. Um, some of it can't be aired because it was very private and, and such, but what can be aired it'll be great so thank you compass i appreciate that this podcast is awesome uh thank you socal it's way chill i appreciate that man <clears throat> so listen to check it out these are the live streams these are basically our paranormal variety show we do these live streams every wednesday friday and saturday here on the channels uh whether you're listening on youtube twitch or rumble this is where you find us so Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed what we did tonight, Sheldon. Anything in closing? Absolutely, guys. Don't forget, for any new listeners out there, anyone visiting, we do have a Discord channel. It's right there in the chats. Lots of great categories, lots of great people, an amazing community that has built us up to here. But don't also forget, we have our own website, the home base of the Paranormal Portal, paranormalportal.net, and there in the chat as well. Go there, stay up to date on the newest podcast episodes, the next um, live streams, and if you have any amazing encounters, feel free. Interview me button is right on the website as well um, to get a chance to get interviewed by dad if you, and share your story. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being a part of the journey. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow night. Just you guys and me. You're my co-host tomorrow night. So I hope to see you here uh, again, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern is when it all starts, whether it's on YouTube, Twitch, or Rumble. And uh, spread the word on all those platforms too, please. We just need all the love and support we can get because I got visions for this show. And if we can grow, we can make those things happen. So anyway, I still got some videos coming out, investigation stuff. Uh, the, 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 the video that I'm building right now with Jimmy, it's going to be really good. So we'll do that soon. Do you want to say goodnight? Yeah. All right. Come say goodnight, everybody. Night, everybody. All right. That's the minion, folks. <laughs> and uh, so remember, we love you all. Be good. Be kind. Be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day and remember to laugh as much as you can. And that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Thank you, Sheldon, for being here, brother. Of course. All right. I will talk to you in just a minute. But the rest of you, have a great night. Wonderful to see you. And sweet dreams. Good night.